President Obama introduced Sergeant First Class Corey Remsburg, an Army Ranger, uh, who he had met before uh, Sergeant Remsburg had been wounded. He'd met him at a D-Day commemoration uh, on Omaha Beach. After, shortly thereafter, on his 10th deployment, uh, Sergeant Remsburg was grievously wounded, and President Obama told the story of his recovery tonight. He said, like the Army he loves, like the America he serves, Sergeant First Class Corey Remsburg never gives up, and he does not quit. That was punctuated with a standing ovation that went on for more than a minute and 40 seconds. It was absolutely the emotional high point of uh, the address tonight. There was not a single person in the room who was not uh, standing up, at which point Congressman Tim Hulskamp, uh, Congressman, Republican Congressman from Kansas, tweeted, Obama politicizes the military to end his speech. Totally expected, Mr. President. Joining us now is Congressman Tim Hulskamp um, of Kansas. Congressman, thank you very much for being with us. I, I have to ask you if that was tongue-in-cheek. Do you really believe that was politicizing the military? We actually uh, invited our own veteran, uh, one that uh, served bravely as well, some tremendous heroes out there, and, and did receive word from the administration when we put a press release out that perhaps we were politicizing that fact. But uh, very brave men, a lot of brave heroes, and uh, it, it's very interesting because the president very clearly ran against the military. Uh, he take, can, continues to highlight them when it helps politically. But at the end of the day, more of the same in the speech, uh, Rachel. Things How are not did the going well there. against the military? Well, it's pretty clear. He wanted to bring the troops home. He wants to close Gitmo. He wants to do all kinds of things. Uh, but at the end of the day, the focus on the speech <laughs> should have been, how are things working out? Is and and the right troops, now, they're not working out well. bringing the troops home your definition of being against the military? No. I, what the president talked about when he first ran, obviously, is very different. You know, whether it's his NSA issue, whether it's the issue of how much president uh, uh, should have in terms of authority. I mean, he ran against Bush on all these things, Rachel. It's very clear. And all of a sudden, he's all for presidential power now. He's all for the NSA now. He's all for the military now during a speech. But at the end of the day, his policies are failing. And that's why we have 24 million Americans still looking for a full-time job. Congressman Hillscamp, I still don't understand how he ran against the military. I still don't understand if you mean he was politicizing the military by praising that sergeant. I do have to ask you about the thing that you tweeted immediately thereafter. Three minutes later, you said, was there a diplomat in Benghazi that gave oh. his life for his country, Mr. President? Are you yeah. denying that an American do diplomat died in Benghazi? Do you know what happened in Benghazi? The president refuses to come clean. Your Hillary Clinton refuses to come clean. They won't tell us what happened. And a diplomat died. We believe the initial evidence still is because the president or somebody in the White House refused to provide support to defend that diplomat and our Marines on the ground. That's ill reprehensible. I will not accept no answer from that, and that's what we're talking about. Congressman, we need answers Congressman on all Hillscamp, kinds of things, Rachel. Regardless of whether it's irreprehensible, I mean, are you questioning whether or not Ambassador Stevens gave his life for his country? Was Rachel, there a diplomat you know, in Benghazi that gave his life for his country? Rachel, you what know you? we're looking for answers. You know this president and Hillary Clinton are hiding the truth on Benghazi. We're just looking for them to come forward, let those folks testify that we're on the ground. That's the facts of the matter. We're still looking forward to that. And that's a congressional responsibility. It's also a responsibility of Hillary Clinton. You know, just a few months ago, she said, what difference does it make? Two days ago, she said it was the biggest regret of her life, the failure in Benghazi. So we're looking for some answers there because that should not happen again. The Republicans have passed bills. We put stuff in the budget that would help protect our embassies and diplomats Congressman like those Hillscamp, who perished in Benghazi. Did you vote for the spending bill that just cut the security funding for American diplomatic facilities abroad? There was a significant cut to those diplomatic facilities in the last spending bill. Did you vote for that? Did you support that? No, I did not uh, vote for that bill. Did There's you vote for the cut to diplomatic security facilities in their security before the Benghazi incident? No, we had passed additional security measures uh, as requested by the administration but don't forget the facts of the matter is Hillary Clinton did not request security enhancements and we do believe that this administration let our troops and let this diplomat down we need more answers there we need answers about a lot of things this administration promised to be the most transparent in history Rachel and I think if you would stop being a cheerleader and be a journalist you'd recognize we're not getting those answers did you just call me a cheerleader
I don't know. Maybe you have that history. I'm saying no, look wait, at wait, the wait, facts no, of the matter. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I'm you, saying wait, you're a cheerleader on. for the administration. Okay, so I'm you're a cheerleader? You're not being a journalist when you're not willing to look at the facts. If it was Bush, you would be jumping and screaming. You're but amazing. because it's Hillary Clinton, <laughs> you don't want the answers. Rachel, face the facts. We don't when you said know the answers tonight, there. When you said release of Obama's speech reads like dictates from a king. Hashtag lawless. Imperium. Whenever and wherever I can, I will act without constraints. Lawless. The new imperial presidency, Obama will do everything without legislation to do advance really his radical think he agenda. Yes, you his deleted classroom. Article 1. When you exactly. tweeted that the president is hail to the king, Obama to unleash the imperial presidency, are you making the case that this president is acting in an unlawful manner by proposing the things he proposed in his State of the Union address? The president acted in numerous unlawful matters, particularly in his willingness to suspend parts of Obamacare. He went out and said big businesses, for example, don't have to live with Obamacare. I think that's lawlessness. I don't think he has that authority. I do not think he had authority to make recess appointments. I think the court's going to agree with me. Sir, I'm just you have to, to agree on the with case me. that you're making, which is that his speech says that he a is a king. The speech makes no law. The president the makes good speeches. The release of the speech reads like dictates from a king. Hashtag oh, lawless. Really does. What did he say in the speech that was lawless tonight? Fourteen different points in where the president said, I don't like the American people who they elect. That's what the president was saying. He said, I don't like Congress. I don't like the American people that sent these people up here. Uh, and so he listed 14 different dictates, dictates? executive orders. Yes. Are that he was going to take. executive orders lawless? An executive action without authority is lawlessness. Executive he did not have the authority. Are lawless? If there is no authority. Under Obamacare, <laughs> he decided, is, we Rachel, you circle. know this, That's true. he if there recited, is no authority, then he it has decided, no authority. He has no camp. authority to suspend Obamacare, and that's what this president has done. I think that's Hill's lawlessness. Camp, your tweet stream tonight and your arguments here Enjoy uh, are from two totally Enjoy different em. universes. Uh, but it's the universe of reality, is... Rachel, the universe of outside this beltway. The president's speech fell flat out in the real world. In Washington, there's still a Twitter, but recognize Americans want some answers. They want some solutions. The economy's flatlined. 6.5 million more Americans are in poverty since this president took office, and he wants to preach about income equality that he created. That's a failure. And that's all we're asking, Mr. President. Be truthful that your solutions have not worked. Congressman Tim Hillskamp um, of Kansas. Uh, I got to admit, I've, I've always enjoyed you on television with other people. I found you spectacularly disingenuous in explaining your own words tonight. But I hope you'd come on my show and we could have this conversation one on one sometime soon. Oh, okay. we'd love to continue. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Wow. I love that sweet goodbye. Wow. And you know what he missed? It was like news match Mad Libs. What I was, it was just Amazing. interesting that he was basically uh, criticizing the commander in chief. If yeah. he was familiar with the Constitution, you should remember, yeah. it's not the military separate. He's the commander in chief, the president of the United States. And he's paying tribute to a, a, an injured, a wounded soldier who's really paid a price for his, his service and with his service. And there's something wrong with that? And also, by the way, the nonpartisan or bipartisan Senate Intelligence Committee has completely verified yes, everything that Susan right. Rice said. Every point, it was caused by a copycat uh, attack coming from Cairo over to Benghazi, which was itself stimulated by all the evidence they have by that crazy movie guy making a movie out in Los Angeles. And the fact that the use of the term extremist rather than terrorist came from the CIA. And the non-reference to the al-Qaeda was a decision by the sainted General Petraeus at the yeah. Everything and, and was done right. Way, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, and George Bush had more executive orders than President yeah. Obama. So yeah. if they, if he's being imperial, I guess but they were Wallace, imperial. To, with zo to zoom out, to zoom out for a moment, right? I mean, this is th that was it. That's it right there. American politics in a little nutshell. I come before you today to talk about my, my power as President of the United States to do crazy imperial things like convene CEOs to talk about training at community college. And what is the response? Why are you covering up Ben Benghazi? That's it. That's the whole last five years of politics. The president comes out, everyone's talking about, oh, it's going to be executive orders this and executive orders that. He's talking about, like, getting people together at photo ops so we could talk about training some people. It's like this incredibly, incredibly incremental, 500,000 people are going to get a raise. And what's the response? What does Tim Hills Camp hear? He hears Caesar is riding in to destroy the American Republic and cover up Benghazi. That's, I mean, that's the thing that's difficult for me is, like, do you talk to him point to point? point by point because he says this speech shows that the president is an imperial president he's a king he's acting lawlessly he's basing that on the speech okay so what's lawless 
a thing that I read in the comment section of a blog three weeks ago about a conspiracy theory that Louis Gohmert screamed to me about.